My name's Ian Lavery and I'm a proud member of these Jeremy Corbyn's Shadow Cabinet. Ian Lavery is a coming power in the land. Jeremy Corbyn's general election coordinator and chairman of the Labour Party. If the Tories fall, he's most likely destined for high office. But perhaps for one thing, his refusal to answer a simple question asked by BBC Newsnight last year. You got the mortgage from the union? Yeah. Did you pay it off? The union in that myself came to a financial agreement in 2007 with what regard yourself? to the mortgage, which will remain private between myself and the, the union. Did yeah. you pay off your mortgage? Well, there's a financial agreement which was... And you haven't answered the question. Did you pay it off? The answer's no. He didn't pay off his mortgage. Listen, I'm the most experienced man in here. The union of which he was general secretary, the National Union of Mine Workers, Northumberland area, paid it off for him and paid him much more besides. The reason we now know more about Mr Lavery's funny, peculiar mortgage arrangements is that the trade union regulator has looked at the books after investigations by Newsnight and the Sunday Times. The regulator found that the Northumberland Provident and Benevolent Fund had lent Mr Lavery £72,500 to buy a house in 1994. Thirteen years on, the union Mr Lavery was running forgave the loan to Mr Lavery. So he was £72,500 the richer, but there's more. He'd been paying into an endowment fund to pay back the capital cost of the house. It had underperformed but it still paid out £18,000. The regulator found Mr Lavery kept that too. The running total, £90,500. The regulator found that in 2005, Mr Lavery sold a 15% stake in his house to the union for £36,000. Eight years later, in 2013, the house was worth less and so he bought the 15% stake back from the union for £27,500, a notional profit of £8,500. The running total? £98,500. And then there's Mr Lavery's redundancy payments. You might remember this from last year. Mr Lavery got redundancy money, and that feels odd because it seems as though he effectively resigned to go and work in that place behind me. The DOSH, we think, £62,000. But on top of that, there's a further £85,000 paid out to past General Secretary redundancy costs. And there's a mystery about who that is. The regulator says that neither Mr Lavery nor the union could provide documentary evidence of the process or the decision by which Mr Lavery was made redundant. Or why, given he was leaving for a job as an MP, he needed any redundancy payments at all. If you add the £89,887 he got for his redundancy package, to the £72,500 for the forgiven house loan, to the £18,000 he got from his endowment, that totals £180,387. But then it seems Mr Lavery and his old union fell out. The union recently realised it had overpaid Mr Lavery's redundancy by £30,600. The regulator's report shows that the union asked for it back. Mr Lavery disputed £10,600 of it and said he'd only give them £15,000. When the regulator asked the union why they settled for this, they simply replied that they were mindful of Mr Lavery disputing it and the potential legal costs. Mr Lavery was adamant that £15,000 was his final offer. We were left with little choice but to accept. So, the grand total of DOSH from the union to its one-time General Secretary has got to be reduced by £15,000 to £165,387. That's a bobber too in anyone's money. A year ago, when we first asked our question of Mr Lavery, Jeremy Corbyn gave him the benefit of the doubt, and the parliamentary watchdog cleared him. Mr Lavery denies all wrongdoing. But now that we know just how much money he got from the union he used to run, it's fair to ask, 
Is he in Lavery a fit and proper man to be the person who chairs the Labour Party? John Sweeney, we did invite Ian Lavery to join us tonight. He wasn't available. In a statement, he said that under his stewardship, the union had always complied with the rules and the certification officer had signed off every year's transactions. He pointed out that the certification officer's report makes clear that no member of the union, past or present, has made a complaint about financial affairs. Mr Lavery added, I'm pleased that the certification officer has decided not to appoint an inspector or take further action. This report should draw a line under almost two years of allegations and innuendo directed at me and my former colleagues.